I think we have more poster sessions at ISTE in Philadelphia. This is called the Rise of the Franken Stuffies. It is. <laughs> uh, so you're Petra Willems. Willems. All right, and you're from Canada. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, tell us about your poster session. So this is a project we do with our grade nines. It's a PBL unit, which integrates science and humanities. It basically goes through three phases. So the first phase is they actually make a Frankenstuffy. So they put together different stuffed animals and sew them together. Then once they've created their Frankenstuffy, they actually write the story of it. And because it's integrating science, they have to explain how the DNA has made this a, a adapted animal for whatever environment. Or so, so what is this thing we're looking at here? It's, it's a reindeer? A dog, I believe he's called the Brudogan by Jackson. Brudogan. <laughs> all right. So, Did, so is this all sewing or they take uh, different stuffed animals and uh, put them together? Different stuffed animals and then they sew this parts together. So you can see with the zertle up here, he's taking the, the, the shell of a turtle, uh -huh. the body of the fish, the zebra, the horns off something. Yeah. And then the point of their creative writing is to explain how all those pieces make him into a better whole animal. So they have to be able to explain how that DNA has made it a more appropriate animal for the environment. Uh -huh. And then eventually, once they've created that awesome story, they have to then take it and represent it visually in the form of a movie. So we use the iPad, so lots of explain everything, action movie, iMovie brought together. And actually, the videos are after, they've only been using the iPad a month at this point. Yeah. So it's pretty impressive what you can do. <laughs> so what we're looking at here, that's either... Puppet Pals or Explain yeah, Everything. Explain Everything, yeah. Yeah, that one is definitely Explain Everything. Can they view these videos online? Uh, yes, yeah. You can view the videos on their blogs. Where their blogs avail with the work they've done on it. Can we get that from the address? Absolutely, yep. Yes, and please do visit us and email us and let us know how it's going. Um, we're 100% project-based learning and integrated uh, across grades 8, 9, and 10. So we have lots of different projects up there for people to look at, all free and uh, with exemplars as well. And we're happy to answer emails anytime. Love to connect with other people. Okay. So, so if you, you would sum this up you, with project-based learning, there's a driving question or challenge. What, what, what would be your statement for your project? <laughs> so this actually, you're going to be surprised, is about how human, uh, humans enact, interact with their environment is the driving question of this one. How do humans interact? So actually the content, which isn't really up here because it kind of looks kind of dull when you just put it on a poster, uh, is all about the Industrial Revolution and how the Industrial Revolution affected um, historically us for the rest of our lives and how it affects us ongoing um, and how the Industrial Revolution really hasn't stopped. So we actually look at a steampunk novel as well. It involves a lot of different moving parts. So, yeah. It lo sure looks like they learn a lot. Oh, they do. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Tony. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice meeting you, too. <laughs> All right. Let's go to a couple more posters. One little note. I'm trying something different with this Periscope broadcast. I clicked the little thing that said you have to follow me in order to comment. Um, there were some comments uh, that were coming from people who don't follow me, I guess, that aren't educators, and this is kind of meant for, for, for teachers and people interested in education to watch. So if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question, I'd love you to, but it means that you have to follow me, I guess, on Periscope. Thank you for the encouragement. Um, this one's uh, flipping your class without flipping out your students. We'll look at their diagram here. Oh, here's, here's a near pod if you want to go to it. <laughs> so your students flip when it, when it comes to PBL, Ryan. A good flip, right? Not a flipping out. <laughs> Looks like this poster presenter is a little busy, but that's good. I've been I've done a poster session once, and when there's nobody at your session, that feels really strange. So it's always good when they're busy. Here's another one. 
Um, think you can't use Google with iPads? Think again. We'll go. Well, we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, uh, Google and iPads, that would be right up Casey's alley, wouldn't it? Here's one on mystery Skypes. It seems pretty popular. Now they have a video. Maybe we can capture some of that. Holding my phone up like this, now I really know why it's called Periscope. <laughs> I'm going to have to switch hands, or I'm going to have one sore arm and not the other. Oh, hi, Jenny. Glad you could join me. Hi. <laughs> Can I video you? <laughs> Robin. And you have, you look at all your things. I just walked by somebody who had to like fold theirs like three times because they had so many ribbons on there. Okay, so Mystery Skypes, can you tell us about them? And what, what are you sharing here? Uh, we're talking about Mystery Skyping and how it can build your students' collaboration and communication skills, their critical thinking skills, and geography skills, of course. But it doesn't have to be about uh, location. If you have littles, you could do Mystery Number, you could do Mystery Animal, but it's about building connections with other people in the world, which works really well with the Estinets as well. Um, and I had students that were had severe anxiety about talking to anybody and after doing Mystery Location, Mystery Skype, they were more confident students and they were, they're leading assemblies now. And they're able to get up and talk to everybody. Uh, another thing that it really helped with was building an awareness of cultural differences and similarities and about being culturally sensitive to other people just because we uh, think one way not everybody believes the same thing as we do my students were a lot more religiously sensitive uh, we had actually skyped with New Zealand and asked them if they were part of the Australian continent because we didn't know what continent and they were really offended by us asking them if they were Australian. They're actually part of Micronesia, and so my students learned a really big lesson about cultural sensitivity from that. So one of the hard things to do about a mystery Skype, as you mentioned, New Zealand, is the time zone difference. How do you handle that? Um, well, it's a great opportunity to share student learning with parents when they come back in the evening for ice cream and pizza. Okay, so you get, give, feed them and they'll come. Yeah, yeah, always feed them and they'll come. And the parents get right into it too and they want to get up there and ask questions. So it just really builds community within your classroom when you can do things like that. And I ha also have a very global PLN and so I'm avail I can connect with people all over the world. But Skype in the Classroom has a mystery Skype session section. And I know that uh, Google Plus community also as well. And hashtag Mystery Skype on uh, Twitter is another way to really connect with people. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> have to follow me. There's not many people end up chatting. So I'm going to end this broadcast and do another one that's, that's more open because I like it when more people ask questions. So I will see you later.